Hi, I'm Curtis Parody, and welcome to Now, the show about some of the most interesting news happening in the world right now. Happy, happy Wednesday, everyone. It's that awesome middle ground of the week, but what on this amazing planet of ours could we possibly talk about today? Well, let's start with some nerd-type news. Well, okay, it's really not nerd-type news. It's more like you found, like, an old copy of a comic book, and, well, it's worth a ton of money. How much and what comic, you may ask? Well, let's get right into this. A man by the name of David Gonzalez was searching up in his attic, you know, rummaging through some old, like, insulation and newspapers when he came across something kind of interesting. He found a rare first-edition comic of Superman. The only bad thing, well, he didn't really know that he was actually, like, looking at it, and he just kind of chucked it aside. It was only until a later time when he was talking to his wife's aunt, who was actually a collector of comics, did he realize exactly what he had. It's estimated that there are only 100 copies of this comic left in the world, making this comic very valuable, even though it was in a bad, like, condition because it had been up in an attic for, like, 70 years. Knowing this, of course, David put it up on auction and found that over 51 people were interested and put in offers for this rare book. But in the end, David took a staggering $175,000 for this book that, you know, just happened to be up in his attic. Yep, like, no big deal. Like, I just found something up in my attic and was like, oh, I better sell this. So now I'm just gonna go out and buy a sports car. That doesn't happen too often, at least not that I'm aware of. So though David got a great amount of cash for this book, it's not even close to the record for the most spent on that copy of the comic book. Back in 2011, a copy like the one David found, but in a much better shape, was sold at auction for a staggering $2.6 million. Now that's a lot of money. That's like, I'm gonna make it rain money. Now, after buying that book, of course, you probably sealed it up in like a glass case. It's like in a climate controlled vault. You know, because really, if you spend that much money on something, you're not just going to leave it on the coffee table because that's just stupid. Next up, let's jump across the pond to Denmark, where a grocery store got a very interesting recent shipment of bananas. Inside the crate of bananas the store received, it found an interestingly large amount of cocaine. And when I say interesting, I mean like 100 kilograms of cocaine. That's like a freaking load of cocaine. And if you really want to think about it in a dollar amount, well, it's just a mere 12 million euros. That's a lot of powder. Like you make it rain powder. Over, I don't know, what do you, I don't know what you do with cocaine. I don't do it. So surprise, surprise, the shipment actually, well, you know, wasn't supposed to go to this grocery store. It was supposed to go to another location. The crate originated from Colombia, and surprisingly, this isn't the first time that smugglers have attempted to actually use fruit to smuggle drugs into a country. In a recent case, they actually hollowed out a bunch of different fruit, then filled it with drugs, and then like glued them back together in hopes that the drugs would get through like the security at an airport. It didn't work though, surprisingly. Surprise, surprise, gluing fruit back together doesn't freaking work. And of course, the men that were responsible for that were taken into custody. At the current time though, the men responsible for the thing happening in Denmark have not been found, so you know, that's just currently happening. From drugs to, well, a kind of drug and like an internet drug called Facebook. You may or may not use it. Looks like Facebook is once again taking a page out of the Twitter book because today they are rolling out hashtags on their site. Yes, that's right. Now you can have fun with hashtags on Facebook too. You can add them to any post you create from photos, videos, and even links. And when you click on the hashtag itself, a little bring up like Twitter, a list of other posts that use that same hashtag. The one thing that could present a big problem for Facebook is the fact of privacy. Unlike Twitter where everything is public, Facebook has a rather interesting privacy system. At this time it looks like when you click on a hashtag you see all of the public posts that use that tag and any friends that you have that are also using that tag. So you won't see like all of the posts using the tag but you will see a very large amount. Facebook also announced that at this time it would not be promoting hashtags for advertisement but you can imagine that's gonna come soon. And last, let's end today's show with something I seen online and I really don't know what to say about it. How the story goes is that a woman went into Dunkin' Donuts the night before, ordered her order, but they didn't give her a receipt. Now, according to Dunkin' Donuts, if you don't receive a receipt, well, your order is free, though I didn't know that existed. The woman was then very upset when she was told to come back the next day and get her free order. So when she did come back the next day, she had some very choice words for the people working behind the counter. Hi, right, Facebook, this is what you have to do in, in life. It fucking sucks, blow my brains out. I cannot wait to post this because I literally thought this was the best one in the city and I gave you guys so many good like remarks online because I have a business degree and like I really did until that bitch completely pissed me off. Are you Navy? Anything else? What's your name? Is Needy going to still be working here after this? Are you Needy? Yeah. Oh, well guess what? This shit's about to go live, bitch. Right on Facebook because I already posted what your dumbass did last night. But of course, after this entire event happened, the woman posted the video online to show the world just how bad Dunkin' Donuts really is. 
but it didn't really go too well for her. Because Antoinette seen what a horrible person she was and well, they turned on her. And they didn't just turn on her, they also did what they do best and really found a bunch of information about her. Like the fact that she's 27 years old, her name is Taylor Chapman, and well, according to her Twitter account, she has a business degree. Though, of course, that didn't really help her in the situation that we've seen. The man in this situation is 18-year-old Abid Adar, who handled the situation with pure class, like calm, collective, and well, he didn't add fuel to the flames, which is like crazy because let's face it, if I was in that situation, I would have had some really choice words for her, which probably would have got me fired. But he handled it well, so Dunkin' Donuts sent him this tweet about it. We're proud of how our crew members handled this situation. The franchise owner of the restaurant plans to recognize the crew member. Our franchisee will be recognizing the employers for their efforts. They handled the difficult situation with race and patience. It's great to see the company react in this way, and really the only person who came out of this whole thing in a negative manner? Well, that's Taylor Chapman, but let's not forget. Because I have a business degree. Sure you do, Taylor, but guess what? I don't care. And last, just to throw this in here, if you're a person who creates awesome content using The Sims 3, I would love to feature you in my new show, The Simulation. Let me know what you do, links to the content you create by email. You can email the show at now at paradisemedia.ca. I'll be looking through all of the submissions and featuring a few of them on Saturday's show. Okay, so jumping back to the topic of Dunkin' Donuts here, how would you have responded to that lady coming in and yelling at you? Let me know in the comment section down below, or of course you can always let me know on my Facebook page, through Twitter, or on Google+. Links to all that and the other topics I talked about in today's episode in the description down below. And hey, if you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more great free now content every single day of the week. So until tomorrow, I'm Curtis Parody, and that's what's happening now. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. You can of course check out more videos that I create by clicking on them below. Check out now for the latest news happening in the world right now, Paradise Gaming for some fun gameplay videos, or of course my personal vlog channel to see what I'm doing outside of my studio. Also, if you're interested in supporting the show and getting some new clothes for yourself, just like this shirt, you can pick up this one if you want, check out the store at thecurtisparadystore.ca. Bye everyone.